Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our admin who received this message. The message, it reads like this. Hello, how are you? Can you please post my own story? I never imagined that I would find myself confessing to acts that are so horrific that I can even barely believe that they were real. But they did happen. Yes, indeed, they happened. I grew up in a small village in central Kenya where life was really hard. But I had to do what I had to do. And most of the people that I knew, they were as broke as my family was. But I was raised in a God-fearing family. And I believed in the power of good, in hard work, in honesty. But as I grew older, life became hard, jobs were scarce, money was tight, and my dreams of escaping poverty seemed further out of reach. It was in the year 2008 when I had a new NGO that had been set up in, in a nearby town. When I heard about this new NGO that was around, I heard that they were recruiting young men for various jobs. Mind you, in my family, they used to be some traditional healers, but my grandfather and my grandmother, it was said that they had decided not to be part of that. Then they started going to church. I heard that these people, they wanted young men and they were offering salaries that seemed too good to be true. I did not question it. I saw it as a chance to make something out of myself, to finally have the life that I had always dreamt of. I joined the NGO with hope in my heart and aware that this was the first step into darkness, into devil worship that would nearly destroy me. I was someone who was born in a very hard working family and before even I knew it, everyone at that NGO really liked me. The work started off simple enough, organizing community events, distributing supplies, things that seemed innocent. But as I grew older and more trusted within the organization, they began to introduce me to another group. So they called this group the Order, those that were intelligent and skillful. And they said that it was for those who wanted more out of life those who were willing to make sacrifices. So when they said that, those that were willing to make sacrifices, I did not understand. Then they started speaking of some rituals, Persian and Babylonian ancient practices that you can use to influence. That is how it all started, psychological influence. We were being taught that how to manipulate others how to be ahead at all the times. So I thought that maybe this was personal development since we were always being taken to these courses where we will meet up with different people from different organizations, mostly whites, that would be teaching us about the power of imagination and the power of knowing what you want and claiming whatever that you want that might be in the spiritual realm. So I was curious and because this was the only job that I could get, I was really desperate. I had no choice at all. So I started following everything that we were being taught. I wanted to escape poverty, also to prove that I was more than just a poor man from the village. One night I was invited to a meeting. Usually we used to have this meeting like late at night, mind you. We would be taken to the city where we will be staying in different hotels and guest houses. That is where we will do these meetings. It was held in another conference room. No lights were switched off. So then there were candles. The candles were the ones that were lit up. The other men in the room, even though they had familiar faces, there were people that I had worked alongside with. But on that day, they were really different. There was something demonic about everything that was happened. That was when they asked for a blood offering. Yes, just like that. One of the guy asked for a blood offering. And then there was a glass that was taken. It was a wine glass. It had some red liquid that was inside that glass. And then they started to pass it around. Everyone would take a sip and then they would pass it around. Until I was given that wine glass that was full of the blood, I did not want to drink it, but I was told that 
I had to drink it. Then after I had drank some, I saw a man who came into that conference room. He was wearing a red robe. It had so many strange symbols that I had never seen before. Usually the symbols which they say they represent the Illuminati, they were all over his robe. He started speaking with us, but I did not understand whatever he was saying. He looked at me, he kept on looking at me and smiled and he said that I was welcome for I had drank the blood. And then there was another sacrifice that was done, but this was a few days later. I was told that I was supposed to make a covenant with the order. I did not know that I was making a covenant with the devil. A paper was bought. It was a kind of a paper that people do not use on a day-to-day -day basis. It was more like a papyrus paper made to look like a papyrus, those that they used in ancient Egypt. It was rolled open and then I was made to sign. A small cut was made on my hand with a very short, sharp knife and it was really painful. Blood started dripping onto that papyrus and then I was told that I had made a covenant with the order never to live. If I live, I die. That was what I was told by the master. From that night on, my life was no longer the same. It was as if I was living for this other spirit that had entered into my heart. How did this spirit enter into my heart? I was taken into another room. When I was taken into that room, they locked me up. And then I saw all sorts of crawling animals and insects. Those crawling insects, they came and they entered into my heart. And I saw even the spirit of God leaving my heart. And these were the spirits that were now occupying my heart, controlling whatever that I wanted to do. Then I started to crave, to crave for human meat. Yes, indeed, you had me right. I started to crave for human meat. It was not only me. It was another girl that had also joined at the same time. One night when the craving overpowered us, we then found ourselves walking towards a cemetery on the outskirts of town. We really do not know how we got there without getting mugged and robbed, but we were no longer in control. It was as if our bodies were being used by those crawling creatures that had entered into our hearts. We started digging. We dug up so fast it was demonic what happened on that night. Until we reached the coffin, we opened it up as our hearts were racing. We looked at the corpse. It was the corpse of a woman. Her face was white pale, representing that no blood anymore in her system was flowing. Her eyes closed as if she was in a peaceful sleep, but we were not at peace. We felt so hungry. The type of hunger that you feel when you wake up in the morning, that was what we were feeling. And... We then started eating. We just took a piece from her body. There was no need for a knife anymore because the moment that you would pull even any part of her body, it will just come off because the corpse was already rotting. We ate and then we climbed out of that grave. We just left it like that. It was supposed to be reported on the news, but a couple of days later, that was when we were taken back to that grave and we saw that the grave, it was as if it had not been untouched. We asked the master what had happened and we were told that these were things of the spirit. We kept on doing this and when I left the organization, me and that girl, we started working, but what we were doing was that we would get this human body parts across Nairobi. We will be meeting some Sangomas who needed body parts and we were selling them to those that dealt in black market money-making rituals. It was as if we had no soul left, nothing, just doing this. That was when all of a sudden, when I was on my way to sell a bag of body parts because the girl that I was working with, she was taken, but she was relocated to where I did not even know. The reason as to why she was relocated, it was because me and her, we started dating. One night we had made love on top of a grave and we were not allowed to sleep with each other. So she was removed from me and taken to another area. I don't know if she is still, is still alive or she passed away. When I was walking through the narrow 
roads of Nairobi, I then met a man whom I'll call Peter, not his real name, he was a pastor, a man who seemed out of place in the darkness and he looked at me and when he looked at me i saw that there was compassion that was written all over his face as if he could see that i was broken inside he placed me at that time i was holding my bag of body parts that i was about to sell to this other man who was a herbalist he approached me placed my placed his hand on my shoulder and asked if he could pray with me i wanted to push away to run but something inside of me sparked i felt soft for the first time in my life after a couple of years after the possession it happened i allowed him to speak as he prayed i felt really warm as this warmth started to spread across my body the light that pushed against those creatures that were in my heart it was as if those chains that had bound me for years were finally breaking the demons they were now living the pastor gave me a very small bible and i had bad intentions with that bible to use it in rituals to blaspheme the word of god but when i arrived at the place where i was staying i then started crying whilst i was holding that bible and i knew that it was done i then gave my life to christ on my own but i returned back to that man i stayed with that man because the organization was threatening me spiritually after so many years i found the strength to return back to my village and when i returned back to my village i cried when i saw my siblings today i live as a man who has eaten human meat it does not make me to feel good but at the same time even though i used to be a man who dug up graves who consumed the dead but jesus christ rescued me as for that girl that i was working with my heart cries for her because i don't know what happened to her i have tried to search for him but i can't no matter what i try to do i cannot get in touch with her dear listeners right there was a message that was forwarded to me by one of our admin who received this translation strange things indeed they do happen in this world